Well, hi, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and welcome to another episode of Fifty Shades of Phuket. Now, in episode one, we learned that all measurements are subject to interpretation. For example, this iPhone could be six inches, could be three feet, who really knows? Now, in this episode, we're going to learn about scientists, the only people authorized by them to interpret and understand data. Then they get to tell the rest of us what to think. So let's roll the music and get going. Now let's see what he has to say about Copernicus first. So the father, if you like, of the heliocentric model is Nicholas Copernicus. He was a Renaissance-era mathematician and astronomer who formulated a model of the universe that placed the sun rather than the earth at the center of the universe. So this is really where the heliocentric model began. Now what's important to keep in mind that it, it doesn't matter when or where these people existed in history. You know, this is the first problem that I have with Phuket's concept of how this all came about. People do not make discoveries in isolation. They build on the work of those that came before them. So it is important to understand the historical context of Copernicus and Newton and Einstein, because it gives us an idea of what they started with and then what they brought it to. So we'll continue. What? is important to keep in mind is that a select few individuals are taught to us as being responsible for creating the heliocentric model. You know, science is very much like putting together a puzzle. Um, at times we don't have all of the pieces, but countless people build individual pieces of this puzzle. Now, occasionally you'll have somebody like Copernicus that puts these pieces together and makes a picture out of it. So, in a way, that's the discovery. But the discovery is built on the work of countless other scientists gathering data. You know, it's not just something that he dreamt up one day. So, let's continue. Whether it's uh, Eratosthenes, Nicholas Copernicus, uh Newton, Galileo, Einstein, we are given these historical accounts of these people and their, their measurements, their observations, their discoveries, but we really cannot know what these people concluded themselves in their own uh, private lives. You know, I'm really confused about this statement. We have no idea of what they concluded themselves. Okay? That's not really true. One of the things that scientists do is take notes. They record journals. They record observations. They show their work, as we used to have to do in school. And the reason that they do this is that we don't have to guess what was in their head. They put it all out on paper for other people to review, other people to do themselves, and confirm their findings. That's part of the scientific method. Now, if you look at the, um, the stick experiment of Eratosthenes, where he measured the circumference of the world, he did not develop the concept that the Earth was a sphere. That was done before he was his time. What he did was he tried to derive a way to measure the circumference of that sphere. He wasn't setting out to prove the sphere. He was setting out to try and find a method of measuring the circumference. How do we know what he was trying to do? Because he kept records. All right. That allows us, and by us, I mean me personally, to be able to reproduce his experiment and even expand on it by adding a second observation point. So this is the way science works. We don't have to guess what was in their head or what their feelings were or what they thought of something. 
It's written down. It's recorded. There's a record of it. From the, the measurements and the observations that they made, we are given this historical account to fit the, the heliocentric model. So we'll go with this, that it was a decision, not a discovery, a decision to put the sun at the center. You know, I want to go ahead and put this EKG up for a moment. Now, this course is not about reading EKGs. This course is about interpreting data. Now, according to Phuket, I could look at this thing and just call it anything that I want. But actually, with a little bit of training, you can see some things. You notice that these heartbeats over here look pretty normal, okay? Now, you'll notice that we have what's called tombstones in lead two, in lead three, lead AVF, and we also have some out here in V6 and V5. This particular pattern, to me, indicates that something is going on in the inferior wall of the heart and out here at the apex. The right coronary artery serves those areas. So if there's a blockage in the right coronary artery, I would expect somebody to have a heart attack on the inferior wall and have it curl around a little bit. Based on the pattern that I see here, I can deduce what is going on with somebody's heart. Now, whether you put the earth or the moon or whatever at the center, doesn't really matter. It just shows really uh, that the observations that anyone can make and the measurements that anyone can make are totally open to interpretation. There has not been any discovery along the way, especially when it comes to the thought experiments by people like uh, Newton or Einstein. They didn't do, they didn't make any physical measurements. Now you see, this is the thing that really kind of bothers me about this, and that is that he's saying that people like Newton and Copernicus and the rest of these did not make any physical measurements. That's simply not true. They plotted stars, they plotted planets, they measured falling objects, they measured objects rolling down inclines. They made countless physical measurements. They looked at orbits. And then they came up with something that made everything fit together and make sense. That was the discovery. Whether it be Kepler's laws of planetary motion, Newton's laws of gravi universal gravity, or Copernicus's uh, heliocentric model. These all not only fit together, they explain things better than those that came before. Them. And that's the way science advances. Now, he mentioned Einstein in particular, and I want to share something with you just to have a look and see how Einstein did testing. Now, in May of 1919, there was a solar eclipse. Einstein's theories suggested that in the presence of a very massive object in a high gravitational field, light would be bent. Now, if you plot the locations of stars in relationship to each other, and then you pass a very large gravitational field between you and those stars, Einstein would predict that the light would be bent and the stars would seem to shift position. Not only would they just shift position, they would shift a certain amount and be in a predictable location if his equations were correct. So teams of astronomers under Sir Arthur Eddington went to Africa and Brazil to photograph the eclipse after they mapped the stars. And as it turns out, when they studied the plates, the starlight had shifted exactly as predicted by Einstein, confirming Einstein's theory of relativity. That's how you test things in theoretical physics. You make predictions and see if the predictions are accurate. So if we are to be really pragmatic and really scientific and open-minded, not fixed to one belief or presupposition, then 
anyone can realize that all these observations are totally open to interpretation and mathematics is is a language to describe physics and just like any other language whether it's english french russian whatever a language can be used to convey facts or it can be used to convey a story and so what we have with the heliocentric model and all these people that have contributed to what has been passed off as science are just it's just a story these chapters in a story to give us this heliocentric theory well so there you have it science is nothing but a collection of stories from what i'm gathering from nick he is of the impression that people just make something up and as long as we can't disprove it well that makes it a fact okay i can make things up but did i make up whether or not that patient was having an inferior wall mi or did i apply scientific deduction and determine where the blockage in the artery was based on training experience and being able to observe and collate facts that I see in front of me. That's the way science builds on itself. It's not something that is done within the mind of a scientist. It's something that is done in the open with work shown so other people can check it. And in order for science to become accepted, a new theory to be accepted, it has to explain things better than the old theory does. This is something that Nick's not grasping here. Now, in the next episode, we're going to have a look at a couple of other things. First of all, uh, Phuket Word has this theory that globalization of the economy has to do with whether or not the sun or the earth is at the center of the universe. And we're also going to have a look at gravity. So we're going to continue this in the next episode. Until then, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for stopping by. Take a moment and reach down and hit that little like and subscribe button. And I'll see you soon. Take care. This rabbit hole's too deep for me.